Commons here in, in Building 5. I'd like to introduce our special guests who will honor us with uh, some remarks today. Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher, Congressman John Yarmuth, and Governor Andy Bashir. We're also joined by the following officials. Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman, Economic Development Secretary Larry Hayes, Katie Smith, Commissioner of Finance, Jonathan Smith, the Governor's Deputy Chief of Staff, Dana Mayton, uh, District Director for Congressman Yarmouth, Rebecca Fleischaker, Louisville Forward Co-Director, and, also, and I also want to welcome First Lady Brittany Bashir. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. AP5, where we are today, is one of GE Appliance's three U.S. refrigerator plants. In this plant, we build bottom freezer refrigerators. Until May of this year, we only built the three-door models of, uh, in Building 5. Thanks to this investment now, we serve the fastest growing segment in high-end refrigeration, the four-door four refrigerators. With our flagship four-door bottom freezer product, which you see in the pictures here, uh, made right here in Louisville now. In addition to launching our flagship product, this investment also positions us for growth into the future. It's a big part of our strategy to strengthen our company's product innovation and manufacturing capabilities. It also marks another milestone in GEA's ongoing commitment to creating more sustainable products and manufacturing processes. These new refrigerators use R600 refrigerant, a low global warming potential uh, refrigerant. They're environmentally friendly refrigerators and they'll help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. With new products and more eco-friendly processes, the, the future is certainly bright for this plant here in Building 5. Launching new product and updating uh, manufacturing process is never under, an easy undertaking, but no one could have imagined uh, the challenges that we'd face uh, launching this one. The pandemic and an unprecedented surge in demand created many new challenges, both personally and professionally, for the team. They had to work within new safety procedures internally, meaning they were working from home for significant periods of time. And when they were in the plant, they had to work with new requirements for PPE, social distancing, safety barriers. And due to COVID, our teams had to think a lot differently and a lot more creatively. Typically, for instance, our manufacturing engineers would travel often globally very extensively to monitor and ensure the progress of our equipment and tooling. Uh, but under COVID protocols, they weren't able to travel. Um, had to develop new and creative ways uh, to make sure that we were successful in these multi-million dollar investments. Brought a whole new meaning to the idea of virtual world. Um, we also typically have the benefit of plant shutdowns uh, to install new equipment and processes like we were doing here in this program. However, given the surge in demand uh, that we saw during the pandemic with people staying at home and, and using their refrigerators more often, the team had to be incredibly flexible in figuring out how to make major changes to factory layout and install new, uh, substantial new pieces of equipment within narrow windows of time while maintaining two, production, two full production shifts, uh, which often meant uh, some very carefully orchestrated weekend uh, work to get that done. As is the GEA way, they figured out a new and better way. We often use the analogy uh, that we change the tire without stopping the car. Uh, I'm so proud of the entire team and would like to take, take a moment to thank the AP5 uh, plant leadership team, our advanced manufacturing, technology, and sourcing teams, as well as Ryan Turbyfill, uh, our pro project uh, director, and Jason May, our, our product director, for their leadership of the team. I also want to personally thank our IUE CWA Local 83761 leadership team. President uh, Kendra Batliner, who unfortunately can't be here today, um, Vice President Brad Gilbert, AP5 Chief Store Mike Nafong, uh, who worked hand in hand with us uh, through this through this process. I'd like to appreciate, show some appreciation there. I'm looking forward to showing you our, our new products uh, and, and our new manufacturing processes. You'll get to see them and some of our factory improvements 
on the tour at the end of this uh, event. But first, I'd like to welcome some of our special guests uh, to the stage. First, it's my pleasure uh, to invite Mayor Fisher to the stage. Well, good morning, everybody. It is great to be here, and it's really been amazing to see this fabulous renaissance that's taken place again here in the park over the past decade or so. So I, I, sometimes when things like take years to come together, you don't feel like that excitement of the moment, but you know, today's announcement really is the culmination of so many wonderful things coming together. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of the citizens of Louisville for this tremendous work that you all have been doing massive increases in employment, investment, and opportunities, and really setting the stage for even a brighter future. I mean, things really look outstanding here. The, just the work that you guys are doing as a global competitor and global market share gainer is just super impressive. You all have a long, beloved presence in our community, as you know as well. So there's been a lot of cycles out here at Appliance Park, and it's great to see us on an up cycle as well. And I want to just talk a little bit about you all as a company and you all as people, and not so much about the specific announcement here today. Because when you think about an organization as big as what you all are and the impact that you have on our city, it's very significant. And you, know, you, you get the measure of people during crises. And think about how you all stepped up during the pandemic to help not just Louisville, not just com the Commonwealth, but the entire country as well. You all manufactured more than 10,000 face shields. You donated more than 375,000 masks and gloves to the health care facilities. You contributed to Louisville Metro's one Louisville fund to help those struggling because of COVID-19. You're a company that cares. And it's important that people care and companies care. And are you allowed in here if you haven't gotten the vaccine yet? Some? If you haven't gotten the vaccine, please get the vaccine, okay? I mean, you're seeing some places of the country right now that are going through their own mini version of the pandemic again because people have not gotten vaccinated. So it's safe for you and safe for your family. So please help others and get the vaccine so we don't have that pain as a city. It's been great to see you all add these thousand plus jobs over the past years or so, highlighting our rich manufacturing tradition here in Louisville consistently noted by Forbes and others as top in the country. So you guys are a main reason for that. You continue to invest. Last year alone, over $100 million to grow dishwater manufacturing operations, launch your new product development studio, con continuing to decrease your new product development cycle times. It's probably seven years or so, I guess, Kevin, when we did first build together, the collaboration between the University of Louisville, the city of Louisville, the state, and of course you guys to really show the world what a global best practice looks like with new product innovation. So you just continue to keep getting after it. So it's clear the future of manufacturing is here and the GE way is leading that. You all have also stepped up as a leader in driving initiatives for workforce development in our city. I want to give a hat tip to Tom Quick. I don't see him here, but his retirement days are fast approaching, I think, here in a matter of a week or so. But Tom and you all stepped up with us with our Evolve 502 initiative, with JCPS, helping us create the academies of Louisville with our high school students, many of whom are coming to work here now, both on the line and see engineering careers here. But you all said, we're a big company. This is important for us we're going to get involved. And I can tell you not all big companies get involved with local problems. So you all have that tremendous com uh, combination of kind of global awareness, scale, and getting involved for one-on-one -on -one solutions. So you all have just been a wonderful company. You're being written about international business journals in terms of how do you move quickly, how do you scale, how do you innovate, how do you have good employee relations, and this is the competitive environment that the world sees ourselves in. Last, I just want to thank uh, the governor for your leadership through the pandemic. Hopefully we're done, but it's not clear that we're done. If people keep the eye on the ball, we'll get through it here in Kentucky. And thank the congressman, takes you know federal, state, local to really help us get things done. So we've got a good team here, and it takes a good team to win. So congratulations to everybody. I uh, really appreciate the wonderful work you're doing out here, and of course, we'll do anything we can to help. So God bless. Congratulations.
Thank you, Mayor Fisher. We really appreciate everything you've done for manufacturing, workforce development, and really the city's economic development in general. Uh, together, we're building a workforce and community where our children uh, can want to work and raise their families, and I have four vested interests there. Uh, now I'd like to uh, invite Congressman Yarmouth to the stage to say a few words. Well, thank you and good morning, everybody. Uh, it's wonderful to be a part of uh, today's event. I've had the privilege of being out here at Appliance Park a number of times during my 14 and a half years in Congress, and every time it's great news, and that's uh, very encouraging, and that is so true of today's event as well. This is not just a question of uh, the amount of production out here at Appliance Park, but this is uh, also a story of incredible innovation. And you know, uh, I'm constantly amazed about the, the innovation that goes on here, and I've, I've been to the uh, speaking with the engineers over the years, and, and uh, I'm just amazed at what they come up with. When, when I was growing up, the most state-of-the-art aspect of my refrigerator back then was that it was uh, powered by electricity, <laughs> and not big blocks of ice. But the pace of change now is, is truly incredible, and uh, that's, uh, you see that every day here. Uh, one thing that has never changed, however, is the quality of work that's being done here by thousands of Kentuckians and more than a handful of Hoosiers uh, who step up to the assembly line each day. Uh, again, it's always been an exciting time to be at the park and see how it has uh, basically risen from, like Phoenix from the ashes uh, uh, a couple of decades ago. And having been here all my life and known what, at one time, the, how huge GE Appliance Park was and, and how it had declined, and now to see the resurrection is, is really, really um, fantastic for our entire community because GE has always been part of the culture, part of the fabric of our community, and it remains that way as well. Um, you know, after everything we've been through the last 16 months, this, this day, this announcement is particularly special uh, because as, as uh, has been mentioned already, the challenges of getting through the last six to 16 months have been enormous. And I've had a lot of conversations with, uh, with the people here about problems they were having, supply chain issues, all sorts of, uh, Greg mentioned the, the PPE uh, problems as well. And we've been working together on that for a long time. So uh, congratulations, Kevin, to you and your management team for uh, steering through these very, very choppy waters. And um, the IUE, CWA, the great leadership there, and the membership, and of course all the employees here who are such, have such dedication to quality. And when I, where I work in Washington, uh, there are some who blast every expenditure as uh, frivolous spending. And ironically, those are often the same people who say government should run, be run about like a business. Government's not there to be run like a business. Government, government is there to help support the people and businesses of this country. And as the only issuer of currency in the country, uh, we're not so, we, can, we can do things that uh, businesses can't do, and we do things that we should do, and that's to, to help support the research and development and innovation in our country because it's critical to our future. And that's what we're seeing uh, today is a, an example of the flaws in that way of thinking that government should be run like a business. Uh, we should wisely invest in innovation, community, and most importantly, good jobs here at home. The $60 million investment in this campus is both a microcosm and the embodiment of what we can do when we invest in innovation, community, and people. Uh, think about where we were a year ago, again, and we've come uh, toward a return to normalcy because of an incredible investment in a nearly unknown mRNA vaccine technology. Uh, that's where we are today. So, uh, and also how we've reinvigorated families, created three million jobs, and stabilized state and local governments, <laughs> governor, mayor, through, through targeted investments in the American Rescue Plan. Uh, yes, we are commemorating the, an achievement of, of Appliance Park and its workers today, but we're also calling attention to the way of the future. These investments in innovation community and people 
who live here are the investments we need for a better Louisville and a better country. This is how we succeed. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, we appreciate over the last 14 years uh, how you've worked uh, to find practical solutions to the tough problems facing our community and our country. Uh, we have great confidence that in your new role as uh, chair of the House Budget Committee, uh, you'll continue to do even more so. Uh, and uh, next, it's my pleasure to welcome the 63rd Governor of the Commonwealth to the stage. We're honored you joined us today and thank you for helping keep Kentuckians safe during the pandemic and especially for the healthy work guidelines that enabled us to remain operational during a time when demand for appliances soared uh, as Americans sheltered at home. Uh, please welcome you to the stage. How good does it feel to be here all in person this morning? It's okay to feel good about it. You deserve to feel good about it because so much hard work went into being here today for the good news we're celebrating and just to be here today in so many ways. Uh, Mayor, it's good to be here with you. Thank you for being so clear and so decisive during COVID to ensure accurate information got out there to the people of Louisville. Uh, Congressman, thank you for your hard work uh, because of which we are investing billions of dollars in water and sewer infrastructure, in rebuilding our schools, and in making sure broadband can reach every part of Kentucky. And I look forward to working with you to get that infrastructure bill passed. We desperately need it. Thank you to GE Appliances a essential company that has been operating and helping people be healthy at home at a time that it was most important. And my goodness, thank you to our brothers and sisters in organized labor, uh, IUE, CWA, the need for your skilled work. And a skilled workforce has never been better, never been more important, and I know you are a critical part of so many of the challenges, uh, the solution to so many of them that we face. We're here today at GE Appliance Park in Louisville to talk about investment, jobs, and Kentucky's emerging status as a leader in the post-COVID economy. Before we get to that, I wanna highlight why we are here, how we've been able to fully reopen our economy, and why we're seeing this incredible economic momentum that seems to build more every week, every day. The reason? Vaccines. The safe, rollout uh, of these effective vaccines and the compassion and the sacrifices that Kentuckians have made to get to the point where we have the opportunity to take those vaccines is leading us out of this pandemic. Now the threat is still real. Today at four, we're gonna give an update on the Delta variant and some concerning signs that we are seeing there. But I will go ahead and tell you the answer, the solution that we're gonna give at that 4 p.m. press conference is vaccines. While we are seeing more breakthrough cases, we are seeing that the vaccines virtually eliminate serious illness and death among those who have taken them. So please, 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 please get that vaccine, spread the word. This is how we continue our positive momentum here in Kentucky. That shot of hope is so important. And let me make it personal for a minute. As governor, I was probably expected to get that vaccine and to do it in front of everybody to build the confidence. But the day I took it, my wife, who I love more than life itself, was standing there next to me and received her vaccine. Three and a half weeks ago, we took our son, Will, who just turned 12, to get his vaccine. I promise you I would not have taken that, that boy, my son, to get it if I did not believe it was 100% safe. But folks, we're to the point where me telling people you ought to get it isn't gonna get any more people to take it. We need you to personally engage. And I know that may be difficult and uncomfortable in certain circumstances, uh, but the safety of the person you're talking to and the future of our economy depend now on those personal, person-to-person -person conversations. Remember, everybody 12 and up can get the vaccine, and if you're over 18, you could be our next millionaire just for getting it. We have two more drawings. These have been fun. Um, they're coming at the end of this month, July 29th and August 26th. And if you are like me, though I don't qualify for that drawing, 
and you have kids and you're worried about their future, remember, at each of those drawings, we're giving away five free full ride to higher education, whatever choice they make, four year, two year, skilled trade, it is a, a, an incredible opportunity. We just had uh, Alex Vonderhaar, a seventh grader in Louisville, win uh, one of those full rides. And when Alex won, and by the way, that kid's in seventh grade, and he stepped up to the microphone in the, in the state capitol and just knocked it out of the park. That took me a couple months to get used to. He said he got the vaccine because he wanted to see his grandparents, and he wanted to feel safer. Now for some good economic news. I gotta tell you, this economy in Kentucky is on fire. You know what? I think we deserve that type of good news. The sacrifices that each and every one of you and everybody in this facility made every day were heroic. You know, most of us probably never thought that we'd wake up at any point in our lives and say that we saved lives every single day. But the decisions that each and every Kentuckian made have us coming out of this pandemic so much better than other states. It means more of our parents and grandparents have been there uh, for the holidays and will be there in the future. And it is the reason, and at least one of the key reasons, that I believe that our future potential is greater in this state than at any time in my lifetime. So just over a week ago, we announced some incredible news, at least on the state government side. We had the largest budget surplus in our history in this last fiscal year. Our general fund totaled $12.8 billion. That exceeded estimates by $1.1 billion. It's nearly 11% above last year, and it's the biggest growth we've seen when you're talking about the economy in 26 years. And our rainy day fund has now grown to about $2 billion, up from just about $303 million at the end of last year. But that's just on the state government side. We've recently seen some of the top economic analysts talking about us in good terms, terms we haven't seen in far too long. There are these groups called rating agencies, Lieutenant Governor, you and I uh, have had in the past to watch when they come out with news because it's normally bad news. It costs us more money to borrow and do things we need to do in the state, and we've gotten the best news we've heard in a long time. Uh, Fitches has come out and said we are recovering faster than just about any other state in the country. And Moody's came out and used a word I didn't think a group like this would. They said we're recovering with gusto. I think that describes Kentucky pretty well. And why? Part of it, how we've dealt with this virus, and they all talk about it. Part of it is the investments that you all, the GE and our workers have made in this past year. You know, in this past year, Site Selection Magazine ranked us number one in our region in economic development. That's in a pandemic. They ranked us number one of any state under five million people. We may be small, but we are mighty. They ranked us number three per capita going up against the rest of the country, but take that away. How many of us compete per capita against anything else? Put us up against the big boys and the big girls of the Texas, the Floridas, the New Yorks, the Californias, you pick. We were number seventh overall. That's something I'm pretty proud of our people for having accomplished in the middle of the most difficult portions of any of our lifetime. And yes, with the economy heating up, we do see some challenges. They were challenges we would have prayed for 12 months ago, and they are challenges that working together we will overcome. Last year, when we look at what we accomplished, it was pretty exciting. In the midst of a pandemic, uh, we, we created about uh, 4,000 new jobs with about $2 billion of new investment. We have already surpassed that this year, and we are just getting started. This year, we've announced nearly 600 new jobs right here in Jefferson County with an economic investment of more than $226 million. And today, we're celebrating great news right here. The completion of this $60 million expansion project at GE Appliance Park. This investment places this site and the workers on the global cutting edge of this industry, doing things ahead of all of your competitors. This upgraded facility will produce four-door refrigerators, the fastest growing segment in the high-end refrigeration. The project also marks the completion of GE Appliance's domestic shift, I like domestic shift, 
to newer, lower impact refrigerants, which are going to greatly reduce environmental impacts. And another reason to celebrate. This is the first time, and this is the first place where these models will be produced anywhere in the United States, and it's right here in Louisville, Kentucky. And to produce the highest of the high tech and the greenest of the green for this industry at GE Appliances, they're adding 250 new jobs here in Louisville. And you and I know what that means. That's 250 families that will have the security of a good job. That's 250 families that will be able to put food on the table. That's 250 families that can invest in their children and in a better future. Now, I'm the first governor, I think, in a long time that will say I love this city. Brittany and I lived here for 15 years with GE Appliances all throughout our house. We did it in the midst of the Great Recession, where we knew that every purchase that we made would support those around us. And for uh, this investment to be made here is really special. GE Appliances has been an outstanding member of Team Kentucky for so many years. Since 2016, GE Appliances created nearly 1,000 jobs in Louisville while investing over a billion dollars in U.S. operations, technology, and new products. GE Appliances operations in Kentucky generate an annual economic impact of $11 billion. So, thank you to Kevin Nolan for your commitment to growing our manufacturing footprint in Kentucky. Thank you to Bill Good, uh, Vice President of Manufacturing for GE Appliances, for your work in completing an investment that reflects the skill and dedication of an amazing workforce. And our commitment is to work with you to make sure that that workforce remains vibrant and that we meet the needs that you have in this facility. And thank you to everybody and, ev and for everything you have done in this pandemic. You know, we have seen the best of the best of who we are, even if only sometimes the worst of the worst gets covered. Think about how much changed during the pandemic. Processes to protect people, making face shields and PPE. To the workers here, there were healthcare heroes that went in better protected to COVID wards because of what you did. That means there were patients in there that were sick that might have not gotten the help that they needed without what you did. At one of the most difficult times, I think the most difficult time that we've ever lived through, we have lost more people in Kentucky during COVID than any three years uh, of, of any three wars in our history combined. You were there doing what it took to provide people the protection they needed from this virus. For that, I can't thank you enough. And we always talked about that we'll get through this and we'll get through this together. But getting there has required you are absolutely essential workers that are willing to change your lives and sometimes even risk your lives to make sure uh, that we got the job done to protect one another. As a dad of two kids, I can't express how grateful I am for the work of all Kentuckians that has gotten us to this point. And I believe that while we have to deal with this Delta variant, we are at a turning point where grief has become hope and stress has become optimism. That we're going to have a better chance moving forward to achieve all of our dreams and to make Kentucky something bigger and better than any of us could have ever dreamed than I ever thought was possible. But you know that comes with the responsibility too. Just like we had waking up every day in COVID. We have to make sure that this chance at prosperity reaches our families, our workers, every part of Kentucky and every part of each of our cities, including parts of Louisville that haven't seen enough investment in far too long. Uh, folks, this is a shot, an opportunity to achieve uh, so many dreams and to make Kentucky, to make the world see Kentucky as that special place we've always known that it is. This announcement today is kicking off what you will see being a big week in Kentucky and in having uh, such an anchor company like GE Appliances step up to be the first part of this week with these new jobs right here is something uh, truly special. So on behalf of the Commonwealth, keep investing, <laughs> keep growing. Uh, we want to be a good partner for you uh, and to everybody out there, my goodness, thank you. God bless. Our best days are yet to come. Thanks.
Thank you, Governor Bashir. I'm now going to turn it over to uh, Kevin Nolan, our uh, CEO. Uh, he's, he assumed his role in 2017 um, and now leads the fastest growing appliance company in the U.S. with a compound average growth rate of over 8% over the last five years. Under Kevin's leadership, we're on track to become the number one appliance company in the U.S. Kevin? Thank you so much, Dave, and good morning to everybody. So first, uh, again, another welcome, uh, Governor Bashir, Congressman Yarmouth, and Mayor Fisher. I can't thank you all enough for the leadership you all provided and helping us get through this pandemic. We're almost through, and I hope if everyone gets a shot, we'll get through a little bit quicker. So really appreciate uh, everybody stepping up, just doing incredible things. But today we're here to celebrate what I would say is manufacturing in America. We're a clear example of what it really means to be an American company. In the last five years, we've invested over a billion dollars and we've created more than 2,000 good jobs. And they're all in our country. And we are a company that takes action. Bringing manufacturing back to the U.S. is what you see here today with this amazing product that we're gonna go out and take a tour of. But what's behind these investments is really what's most important. It's about workforce development. It's about growing diverse suppliers. It's about partnering with community that you heard before. This is what creates the sustainable conditions for the bright future that our Commonwealth and our nation truly deserves. And we're gonna do our part every day. This is not a press release or some empty sentences that you might see from others on websites. This is real work. This is what we are doing, and we're gonna to continue to do it. We're striving to create zero distance between us and our customers, and the millions of families that we serve with our products in the US of A. You know, five years ago, the number one appliance brand in the world, they acquired us. Some feared this would be the end of GE appliances, because our new parent is a Chinese company. It was frankly the opposite. G Appliance has got a new life, and we're on a way to be the most successful company in the U.S. And you ask, how is this possible? Simply, we're led by Americans. We're focused on serving our customers and our users in America. Generate employment in America. And investing as never before in America. This is what we call the GE way. Today is a really important day for us. We're here together to celebrate the start of operations of a new assembly line of our multi-door refrigerators. And in the past, these were made in China. So why did we do this? Why did we reshore this production to Louisville, Kentucky? Because we're committed. We're committed to bringing manufacturing back to the United States. Because it makes good business sense. And because it's the right thing to do for our communities, the city of Louisville, the Commonwealth, and the country. I want to thank you all for visiting today and to see what's going on here at G Appliances because it is truly something special. We always take the right road. This is the way we do things here and this is what we call the GE way. Welcome to Appliances and I'll leave you with Dave McAlpin who will take us through the rest of the day and our great leader of the refrigeration business. Thanks Dave. Thanks, Kevin. Now, uh, what we're really excited about is a uh, chance to take you out in the, uh, in the factory and show you the, the product, and show you some of these great new processes uh, that we've put in place. Um, everybody's been assigned a tour group, um, which have been de designated by numbers uh, on, your, on your seats. There are three stops on the tour, uh, but this plant is a million square feet, and much of the new investment is at the back of the facility. Uh, so there will be a lot of walking. Um, at each stop there are experts to speak a little bit about the equipment that was installed for the project and a little bit more related to our expansion. Uh, feel free to grab a bottle of water um, back in the back on the left, um, on my left. Um, finally, last uh, quick request, I'd, I'd like to offer a special uh, thanks to our, our guest speakers today. Um, and if the speakers uh, wouldn't mind uh, to all come forward, 
uh, we'd like to take a picture to, uh, to remember and, and commemorate the occasion. And then we'll start the tours. What? I think right over here.